This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Amazon's Fire Phone. Shannon's been hands-on with it for the last week. What is the word? Da -na -na -na. What a weird phone. <laughs> That's the word. It works. It's on AT&T, and like most every phone that runs on AT&T in the Bay Area, I had excellent coverage, so I didn't have any problems with that on this phone specifically. I tried to load up the Silk browser with an epic ton of wedding photos right. to just kind of get a feel of how well it runs. Uh, my photographer's web like 3.0 site loaded super fast, so props to Silk Browser and AT&T for that. Phone calls went really well. well, they were very crisp and clean, and the mic seemed to pick me up just fine, but when on speakerphone though, I had this kind of a problem. The phone was so quiet. The <laughs> speaker on it was terrible. There's two of them. There's one at the top and one at the bottom. So you would think it'd be nice and loud and, and you know, stereophonic. Kind of come around. But it was quiet when I was listening to movies and music and the phone call, so I was just like, and eh, not too good on that. Uh, the Fire Phone, it's only 5.6 ounces, so really nice, lightweight, very easy to put in your pocket and run around with. Just don't drop it, because <laughs> it is kind of nice and fancy. Uh, the screen is uh, 1280 by 720p HD, and it's 5.5 inches by 2.6 inches across. It's not 1080, but it does have a nice 315 ppi pixel density. So that means whenever you're watching HD movies or you use a high-def wallpaper and not see the pixels on this small screen because th they're so dense you're not gonna see them on there here you want to test that out Wow <laughs> it looks really nice and the screens really nice and bright it's very very crystal clear I really enjoyed watching a very dark movie on this called the woman in black which was a terrible movie but <laughs> some of the scenes were super super dark but I could you know turn up the brightness all the way up and be able to see all the action so no problems there uh, 32 gig minimum for storage, so you have plenty of storage on there for the for the camera that you, for all the pictures that you're gonna take. Unless you take photos like me and you like to leave 9,000 photos on the camera. <laughs> That's true. I transfer all of mine to my PC, so I was just fine. Uh, it has a 30, 13 megapixel sensor, so Whoa. really nice, decent photos. A lot better than my Nexus 5. I did some comparison shots, uh, which I'll share with you guys, but <laughs> my Nexus 5 was terrible compared to this phone. Of course, the Nexus 5 is a little older, but you know. Not it's, that much older. Yeah, not that much older. It's just like a year. And the photos look great. You can really tell it's a good camera when you take macro shots or as close as the macro will let me get whenever I'm taking pictures of like, I don't know, beer at dinner. Uh, <laughs> the only place that it seems to lag is this dynamic perspective. That's when you move around, it kind of gives you this 3D effect. It's really cool and it made all it's my really friends... It's really stupid. It's, yeah, it's like it's, a kid's it picture really, book from 1970 where it it's like... It doesn't fit any needs other than like showing it to my friends and they went, oh, that's really pretty. It felt a little bit laggy when I moved around a lot or I was flipping from one app oh, screen to my home screen, things like that. And I think it's because of this dynamic perspective. And I even upgraded to the newest firmware. So I think that's just a problem with dynamic perspective specifically. Otherwise, the camera flashes really, really fast. The games I played were very responsive. I played tons of games on the thing. The battery lasted all day for me with normal use. So the battery was excellent, uh, which means constantly checking Instagram and posting right. pictures of my cats and tweeting and taking pictures and videos. So I went from 8.30 a.m to like 10 p.m. Uh, with no charge needed. Good. I think it was at like 40% or so. That's, That's kind of an good. estimation, but around that amount. So full day of use and still I didn't really need to charge it overnight, but I did. Uh, there was a really decent software upgrade, 3.5.1, that did fix a few of the battery flaws with it uh, for previously. So I think that definitely helped with it. Good so phone. It sounds good so far. I, the big question, though, good for me, phone. though, is there's no access to Google's Play Store. Yeah. It can only load Amazon apps. Yeah. What's up with that? So I'll talk about the operating system first, okay. and then I'll get to the apps. It's very similar to the Kindle, Kindle tablet. So if you own a Kindle tablet or if you've you played with it, you'll be very, very familiarized with this Kindle mm -hmm. phone or Fire phone, excuse me. And the Mayday works the same. You just hit a button, you call somebody immediately, and you have a question about your phone. They'll answer it super, super fast, and they're very, very serviceable. So I like Mayday. It's great for people that you know don't want to look up the answer or just have a quick tech question. Uh, I discovered that their app database 
it has a lot more apps than I expected. I was kind of surprised. My banking app was on there. It's okay. not a huge bank, but it, it was on there. Uh, Instagram was on there, Hipmunk even. Uh, there was YouTube, or not YouTube, Facebook. Uh, Twitter is on there as well. All of those were available, but one missing was YouTube. Uh, there is a couple of like, you know, third party ones that are made to let you play YouTube, but honestly, you could just use the Silk browser for that. There is no Google Drive, so also I would have to use the browser for that as well. So I wasn't really able to work as well as I could on other Android phones. It's obviously made for your hardcore Amazon aficionados, right. the people that are shopping with Amazon. And speaking of shopping, they have this really weird thing called Firefly. Firefly. The Firefly, which is super cute. So you open the Firefly and it starts up your camera. And then you hover over some thing that you want to get more information about and then it searches for that thing. And it's, it's, if it's a physical thing like makeup or toothpaste or something that I usually go couponing for, it'll find the Amazon listing for that item. And then it'll just pull up the pricing and everything and you could just buy it right there. But if it's a movie or a TV show or music, you can just point it at whatever you're listening to to slash watching and it'll search for the show and you can then watch it via Prime. It had no problem finding pretty much anything that I threw at it. As long as it was on Amazon, it worked. Uh, I did point the camera at my TV for like five seconds and it was this really random part of this Doctor Who episode and it was able to figure out exactly which episode I was watching, even the name and pulled up a little uh, picture of it and mm -hmm. all that stuff. So I was able to watch that just fine. So it worked. Firefly was impressive. Uh, I should probably mention as well, Amazon does have apps and directions to help you transfer contacts. So say if you have a uh, iPhone, they have a lot of information there for that as well as for your Android phones. And they have this AT&T mobile transfer. But unfortunately, my Nexus 5 is not available on this application, my LG Nexus 5, which kind of made me sad. So I can't use this LG or this AT&T transfer application available on Android. So I was sad about that. <laughs> uh, you do get free and limited cloud drive storage for pretty much for life for all photos taken with the Fire phone. And there's these one-handed shortcuts, which are kind of cool. They, they let you do these different movements and gestures. So if I unlock my phone, I can go like this and it'll switch to the menu. Then I can switch back. Then I can switch again. It'll take me to the weather and um, missed calls or anything like that. So that's kind of cute. Oh, the other one doesn't work. There we go. Yeah, so it's kind of a neat little thing, but it's it's just so weird. <laughs> it's a weird phone. It's a good choice if you're an Amazon obsessed or if you need a very <laughs> easy phone to use. It's really easy to use, but it is very proprietary in that you're not going to be able to get access to the whole Google Play Store app. One uh, thing I, I didn't realize is you can actually search on Amazon for the Fire Phone apps. So I went through, <laughs> well, it, it's kind of funny. So it turns out, you know, like Waze is available yeah. or Comixology. So if there's an app you can't live without, um, either you basically want to check the Fire Phone app. It's like 100, I think it said 188,000 applications currently yeah, available. Yeah, so they have, they've been expanding their mm -hmm. library a lot through the past year. So I was very impressed with the fact that they've included so many more apps, but a lot of those Google proprietary ones are not included yet, right. like the ones owned by Google, the company. Google Maps or Amazon Maps? Amino, Amazon Maps. Amazon Maps? Amazon Maps. <laughs> Amazon Maps. <laughs> so it sounds like thumbs up for the hardware, yeah. thumbs sideways for thumbs the Thumbs up for the hardware. I had no problems with the okay. hardware except for that little lag with dynamic perspective, but the operating system is just kind of iffy for me. I, I really like vanilla Google, uh -huh. uh, vanilla Android, so it was hard for me to go from vanilla Android over to this one and be like, okay, well, where is my apps? You know, can I use <laughs> Google Authenticator? No. So there are a few issues with that. To Amazon's credit, you can have the same experience moving to a Samsung phone or an HTC yep. phone because <laughs> everybody wants to add their own special sauce. Very, very true. Oh, so. Goodness. $650? Good on you, Amazon. Yes, it's six forty nine on Amazon without contract. However, if you do have a contract with AT and T, you can get it for as little as zero dollars up front with twenty seven oh nine due monthly. There you have so, it. So decent pricing. Hmm. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, more of your emails coming up. But first, let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors. 
Do you want to upgrade your skill set, but you can't afford the time and money that you need for a traditional learning environment? Don't worry, you can learn it all at lynda.com, the online learning company with thousands of video tutorials that teach software, creative, and business skills. Plus, new courses are added every week, and the training library keeps pace with today's fast-changing technical and software skills. You can learn anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace, from bite-sized tutorials to comprehensive courses in motion graphics, programming, web design, and so much more. Memberships start at 25 bucks per month and provide unlimited 24-7 access to top quality video courses taught by expert instructors with real-world experience. So try lynda.com free for seven days by visiting lynda.com slash and get the skills you need to get ahead.